What is going on everyone? Welcome to Rob's house. Today we have a mod for the Mustang that I've been excited about for a while. Been wanting to do it for a while. I ordered it. Waiting on parts from Ford for a while from uh, the guy that I ordered it from. Uh, shout out to Sam Reeves from the Mustang 6G Forum who provides these kits for all of us today. We are swapping out the instrument cluster on the Mustang to a brand new digital cluster which is in this box right here it is currently wrapped in foam now uh for those of you who are not familiar with uh s550 mustangs in 2018 they added a new option for the mustang this really cool all digital instrument cluster that replaces your factory tack and speedo it's really customizable you can change the gauge layout and stuff and the speedo kind of speedo and tack layout changes depending upon what your mo mode you're in it's kind of like a corvette honestly like kind of similar setup the 15s to 17s didn't have this though but some people on the forums actually figured out a way that you can swap them over and using Forescan, you can program everything so that everything works kind of out of the box. I know the one thing that we're gonna have to change, there's some instructions on the box on how to edit the mileage. Since I ordered it, my odometer is a little over a thousand miles off right now, so we're gonna have to fix that at the very end. But first, we're gonna walk through the install. I'll fix up the, uh, the mileage later. I already took a picture of the odometer, so I know exactly how many miles are on the car. I wanna make sure that that's accurate, of course, when I swap it over. Today, I'm gonna show you how to remove the factory instrument cluster and how to install the replacement one. Um, it's gonna require taking apart a lot of the dash. We also have to swap some steering wheel controls and stuff like that. So anyway, all that just to say, because we have to take the steering wheel off and we're messing around with the airbag and stuff like that, I am gonna start by disconnecting my negative battery terminal, and then we'll get in the car and we'll actually get started on the install. I'm gonna apologize in advance for the fan noise that is gonna be present throughout this install. It's like a million degrees outside here in Eastern Tennessee today. I, th I think it's actually 91 degrees, so it's just super hot and I really need a fan. So I'll apologize for that background noise and I'll try to speak loudly so that everyone can hear what I'm saying throughout the video. Let's get started. All right guys, so first thing we gotta do is we have to remove our steering wheel. So in order to do that, there are these holes that you probably can't see on the side here, but if I stick my Allen key in here, this is like the perfect size, and wiggle it around, there are these tabs. If I push in, you can see the, see how the airbag came loose? I'm holding it on this side now, I'm gonna do this other side. There we go. And this guy pops right out. If you watch my video on how to swap a steering wheel on an S550 Mustang. You'll have already seen this. So now I'm just gonna remove the connectors. I have these little airbag connectors here. Just pull up on these tabs. And then they come right out. And you know which one's which because they are color coded. So there's yellow and black, yellow and black, right? Easy. Okay, there's our airbag. I'm gonna set that aside. So I have Stuff kind of all over the place right now. We have all of our parts over here. I'm trying to give some nice lighting here. Uh, next thing we got to do is remove our steering wheel. This is a 24. Now this sucker is really on there. So we're gonna use our impact to get this guy off. When you reinstall it, make sure you lock tight it. I actually had, when I originally bought this car, it actually came loose on me while I was driving, which wasn't great. So I had to kind of actually push in on the wheel in order to steer to get where I was going. Uh, so definitely lock tight these, but uh, you don't have to go crazy with torquing it if you lock tight them. All right. Easy enough, right? There's our bolt. Now we have to remove this wiring harness too. This guy should unplug, and then this should just, if I remember correctly, should just slide off. Yeah, there we go. Just kind of on there. It's not that hard to line this up because it's just a hex nut basically. So since this won't turn and I had the wheel straight, I know that my wheel will go on nice and straight. So I'm gonna set my wheel aside just for now. We do have to move all of the controls over, uh, but we'll do that later. Let's finish disassembling this first. Now we do have to take some more stuff off. We have to take this whole clock tower off actually because we have a new one uh, in the kit. I think we, yeah, we can just pull up on this guy. And then I think there's some screws down here. Yeah, there's a, so you can't really see it, but there's a T20 Torx and then way up in here, there's a seven mil. So I'm just gonna get those off real quick. There it is. 
There she is. Typical seven millimeter. You see these in a lot of cars that are all over Corvettes. Literally the exact, exact same fastener. There's two more T20s up there that we gotta get off. And then this whole clock tower should slide right out. There's some stuff we have to unplug too as it comes out, but let's get it. Let's get it free first. So the, so these, T, these uh, T20s are different. They are T20, but they have a different thread pitch it looks like, and one kind of has a built-in washer. These don't, so I'll know that the two that don't have washers built into them are the ones that go up here. Just making a mental note. Just making a mental note while I do this. I totally just lost that. There it is. I got it. I'm just putting everything in my cup holder for now. Right, we can pry this guy off, kind of. And that should give us enough clearance. Unplug this connector. my trim removal tool here for assistance. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's uh, one of these little push tabs, but it was it was actually pushed into part of the clock tower, which is about to come out entirely. So can I get this completely out? Oh, I can. I can, if you pull the lock lever down, that whole thing comes out. Oh, we do have another connector back here. Glad I looked at that. Oh, that's right, there's a push tab down here. That's right. All right, guys, so I, I consulted with the instructions. You are supposed to pull this tab down. Oh, I got it. All right, yeah, you just pull it down pretty hard. So it's it's this guy right here. And if you see this, this tab locks it in place. You gotta pull down pretty hard because it clicks into place. So just pull down pretty hard and so you'll feel it click out kind of, and then this thing just slides right off. Now this is gonna actually be replaced by a new clock tower. So we're not gonna use this part again. We gotta remove the actual dash now. Now there's a little bit of a procedure to doing this. Basically you have to remove all the surrounding trim first. So we're gonna start over here, take our trim tool, just kind of pry out. That guy comes, lose a clip apparently. That comes right out. There are some seven mils that we got to remove here. There's one, two, three, seven mils. These have to come out so that uh, this one is actually holding this on. I didn't realize that. So uh, that needs to come out. And then these two need to come out because we got to take the sunglasses holder and the trunk uh, popper thingy out. Let's just get this, this guy out of here. These are the exact same seven mil fastener uh, that we saw from before. They are all identical. So we can just throw them in our cup holder. Not a problem. Easy. All right, now this guy should pop off. There we go. Okay. And we're gonna unplug it. Set it aside. Same thing, we're gonna take our sunglasses holder panel. It'll pop right off now that we remove those screws. We're gonna unplug it and set it aside. My sunglasses are actually in there. <laughs> uh, now we have to remove the other side of the dash because there, there's a, a seven mil here and there's another one down here. We basically have to expose everything around this guy. I know we gotta take this piece off as well. Uh, that'll come off by itself. Uh, and that can actually just dangle there. Um, really all we need to do is get to this seven mil. But in order to actually get the entire bezel out, we still gotta take this big thing off. So now I'm gonna climb over here. We're actually in my garage and I can't really open this door, but I can get this guy off without doing that. So, cause I've done that a million times. That lower piece has a broken clip in my car. So it actually comes off a little bit easier. Which will work in my favor right now. Now we gotta unplug these gauges. Now, if you don't have a performance pack car, you will not have these center gauges, but if you do, just make sure you unplug that, make sure you don't destroy that wiring harness. We'll set this guy up. I didn't know that all of this was actually, this pattern, this is actually vinyl from the factory. I did not know that until actually 
uh, pulling this off. That's interesting. I don't hate it. I mean, it looks okay, but I just didn't know it was vinyl. Or actually, it might be a hydro dip. I'm not really sure, but anyway, it's some kind of overlay. All right, now we're gonna take our uh, bezel off. So we're gonna remove both of these screws and then these two screws up here and the entire uh, bezel, I think including this little like fan duct directional thingy should just come off. These are all also seven mils. These, are these longer? They are. So all of the seven mils up until this point were shorter than these. So make sure you realize that at least these bottom two are longer and that's because they hold not just the bezel, but they hold the, they hold the gauge cluster itself in place too. This is a longer one. And then I don't know what these are, but. Uh, these are even shorter than the original ones. So you got two and two. Make sure that these go back in the right place. Those are not interchangeable with the other seven mils uh, that we have pulled off. So just making a note of that. Now, this should pop out. Yep, not a problem. That bezel comes right out. And now uh, we should actually be able to remove our gauge cluster. It should just pop out. Yep, it does. And it's got a plug. Okay. And this has one of those push lock thingies also. Now we have a little bit, uh, we have the tricky part. Basically, these are eight millimeter bolts. We're gonna take these out real quick. So we're really screwed in there. And these will actually not get reused. And the reason being is because we are now going to actually cut this piece of plastic out. And in order to do that, we gotta cut up here, we gotta cut along here, we gotta cut down along, along this curve basically, and then straight across the top here. Because our new cluster is actually gonna sit deeper and this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be in the way, actually. So uh, this is the only slightly sketchy part of this install, but from what I was watching on YouTube of other people doing it, shout out to the other YouTubers out there, it does not look hard. It looks sketchy, but it doesn't look hard. Now, I'm just gonna unplug the fan here. I'm gonna plug my Dremel in and get to work on this. So, uh, here's the piece, right? And now it's up here, right? You gotta cut along here, you gotta cut on this side, you gotta cut on this side, and you gotta cut up here. Now, remember, we, we need these screws when we install the new cluster. That's what, I, that's what they actually get mounted to. Um, so, you know, just make sure, make sure that you don't actually cut these tabs completely off, because this is what it mounts to. Um, but that said, you do have to remove that uh, backing, like supporting piece. Uh, I went ahead and removed that and then kind of just vacuumed up. You're gonna get like plastic everywhere, little plastic shavings. It doesn't have to look pretty. All this is gonna get covered. Um, I will say, so the way I did it, uh, cutting this guy up here was easy with the Dremel. I was able to get to that, no problem. Uh, this guy with the Dremel, I was able to angle it. I was, I was able to angle it in there where I could cut it. This guy though, it was kind of hard. I was able to get some of it with the Dremel and then I, I took my Sawzall actually, my reciprocating saw and 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 finished it off. But honestly, uh, in hindsight, you gotta be pretty careful when you do that because you got a wiring harness back here. I didn't destroy it fortunately, but I could have. So uh, just be careful. I didn't realize that that wire is so close back there because I couldn't see it. Uh, and then once once all that's out, you can actually pull it upwards. So you get it away from this air duct. You can kind of pull up on it so that you can cut it without. So th this air duct, this is actually uh, the bond. This is like some kind of plastic bonding agent. I did not actually make a line in this. I know in the video it might look like I actually nicked this. I didn't. Um, so anyway, you make sure you pull this guy up and you can cut right through it. Not a problem. All right, now we need to install our new cluster 
and our new bezel for the cluster. Digital cluster here. Now, this has already been programmed, and their instructions here tell you how in Forescan you can edit the mileage. The one thing that they do tell you is that you can only raise the miles, you cannot lower them. So you would have to mail this back to them if you screw it up. So when I do the programming later, I will make sure that I punch that in correctly. Anyway, that said, this guy should sit now right up in here. Finagle it in place, there we go. All right, so now we have enough room here. And see these, it has these nice little uh, guide pins here too to make sure that this goes in right now. If you push on this, you notice that like, there is a little bit of space back here now because we removed that plastic thing. If we didn't remove the plastic thing, there actually wouldn't be enough space. As you see these tabs on the side, this is made to actually mount obviously in a 2018. So we're actually only gonna have two screws here instead of four, but that's okay. But we had to remove that plastic thing because it doesn't have the proper holes in it like a 2018 plus model would. So anyway, that's why we had to do that. So uh, now that we have that in place with the guide pins, we should be good. Let's put our bezel on. Now the bezel, is somewhat simple in that it pretty much just clips into place. So we'll get our vent lined up here. And also it's worth noting uh, before I put this on that it has the same guide pin holes too. So that'll ensure that everything is properly aligned. So just make sure when you put it on. And we also have to line up those guide pins. Okay, now it should just click into place. Now I am gonna tuck these wires behind it, like I had previously. Uh, these wires, if you guys haven't been watching the channel that long, um, this goes to a switch here, which uh, operates my underglow for this car. So that's what those extra wires are, if you're wondering what that was. And now we actually have everything pretty much lined up. Yep, all good. Now we can actually reinstall all of those seven mils uh, and complete our bezel installation here. So again, I'm sorry for the fan noise, guys. I, I hope it's not coming through too loud on the video. All right, these two short ones, remember, go in here. And these two long ones are the ones that we're looking for. And now... Now that that's in, we can start uh, putting our trim pieces back on. Plug that guy back in. And this, this offers further support, right? All these trim pieces. Uh, so now we're gonna put this little panel back on. Put the sunglasses holder back in. Plug this guy in, this is our trunk release. That guy just clips right into place. Some seven mils that hold that into place. Put this guy back in. Our headlight controls. All right. Now we got our three seven mils that we got to put in there. All right. We need to put our new clock tower on. All right, now this guy should slide right back on, uh, kind of the way, oh, perfect. I felt the bottom thing click into place, so that's good. Plug this stuff back in. Okay, these two T20s, and there's screws on the bottom. Bottom screws actually hold this guy on. This is probably, this part's probably gonna be hard for you guys to see but I gotta get these two screws back in. There we go. All right, so you gotta kinda finagle this thing until it wraps around. You'll actually see it lines up evenly on each side. It's actually, it's actually fairly difficult to do. 
that's really annoying, but the way that I found to get it easier so that you can actually get your head down there to see is unlock the cluster so that you can move it, or unlock your steering column rather, so you can move it all the way up. Now, I'm tightening that sucker down. All right, now that's not going anywhere. Now I'll move the cluster all the way down, lock it in place. And we should be able to snap this bezel right into place. Beautiful. Perfect. All right, last but not least, steering wheel. I'll show you what we got going on here. So. Our steering controls are actually going to change here, right? So our volume's going to move to this side. Our touch to talk is actually going to move to this side and then kind of like some of our gauge navigation menus. And then last but not least, our new section here, the uh, answer and call buttons, but also with settings now, like this button doesn't go the other way. So this, these are bi-directional buttons. We have nav, we have settings, we have music, and then we have the pony button, which is actually used to navigate the digital cluster on the Mustang. So uh, I am not going to, well, I guess I can film it. I'll speed it up. I'll speed it up so you guys see what I'm doing. Right, guys we're in the home stretch i have transferred over all the steering wheel controls i actually didn't do it on my bench because i have all the fluids that i need to do the viper and uh, the corvette my work area is a complete mess i have parts i have um, i have mufflers over there i'm still waiting on the coilovers for the viper we got all it's my garage is a mess right now so i did this in my lap but anyway uh here you can actually see uh where the airbag grabs on so this is how the airbag mechanism works see see how in here there are these grooves right well, what happens is when you push the airbag in, it actually grabs on to these springs. All right guys, so my camera actually died right as I was about to put the airbag back on. I went ahead and reconnected the battery. So our horn works now. I'm gonna go ahead and well, I'm grab my key actually, and we can fire it up. Now I do have to do that final programming step of the odometer. My mileage is gonna be slightly wrong here, but let's see what it looks like. I didn't plug the cluster in. All right, guys, after realizing I am a complete idiot, I forgot to plug the cluster in. So 
Now we can actually take a look at what it's supposed to look like. There we go. There's our new cluster. And it looks awesome. Just turn the car on and make sure it start make sure everything's cool. Alright. So some of the things I noticed right off the bat, uh, first and foremost, the red line is set incorrectly. It's set to 7,500 RPM. Uh, the mileage is actually correct at what my mileage was before, uh, 53,000, but I'm a little above that now. I took a picture before I did the swap. Uh, so anyway, I can fix that. All right, so one of the cool things about the digital cluster is if I shift my, dr if I change my driving mode, right, and I go to sport, see how it changes and then again if I go to track it'll change into track mode so that's kind of cool anyway so yeah so that's the digital dash install I'm just gonna make some programming changes I just have to change my mileage and then I'm done so uh, anyway really happy with uh, how this came out like I said I've been really excited to do this mod especially I mean it just gives such a modern look to the interior of the car you know now i have all the carbon fiber here and the infotainment system and i have the digital dash which is like it's just super cool not seeing an airbag light so that's good that's one thing that you have to look out for i think the only thing i don't like about this is you have to you, you can't like cycle through like you can only cycle through driving modes one at a time kind of uh which kind of sucks now, all that said, I would recommend doing this in the order that I did things in. So I, I, I did it that way intentionally where I disassembled everything and I, I left the, uh, the clock tree off uh, while I actually did the rest of the swap um, on the dash because it, it just gives you more room back there, especially when you need to cut stuff, right? You wanna have all that out of the way. So pretty easy, pretty straightforward. I would give this, uh, I would honestly probably rate this beginner difficulty if I, if I had to. I mean, it's really not that hard. Uh, the kit itself is about $2,000. They're pretty expensive. Just, I mean, the dash itself, even just the dash panel, it's actually a very nice uh, display. Just the panel from Ford is 1200 bucks. So like, you know, you get all the pieces that you need. They program it for you. You can, you know, you give them your your VIN number of your car, your mileage, all that stuff. So. All right, guys, it is the next day, and I wanted to show you the finished product. So I'm in the Mustang here. Let's fire it up. All right, so here we have the digital cluster. I've gone ahead and set it up. There were a couple things that I had to do after we completed the install uh, yesterday evening. Uh, the first of which being I had to update my mileage. So if you take a look here, my mileage reading is now accurate. 54,831.5 miles. The, uh, you, you actually can't edit to the decimal place. So all you have to do is you just put uh, an integer number in. So in this case, I put uh, 54,832 miles, which is where I was. I think it was 2.1 technically. So I'm, I'm within like a tenth of a mile or two, which honestly speedometer error is gonna, you know, over time would cause more error than that. So yeah, the idea is to make it as accurate as possible, right? Because it is illegal to misrepresent the amount of miles on a car. So one of the things to note, and they say this in the in the instructions that come with the kit, is that if you put a number in and your miles are like one or two or three miles too low, increment that number by one and write it again and see what happens. It, it's it's kind of weird. It doesn't, with Forescan, it doesn't put the exact number that you type in. It's usually like one or two miles an hour lower. So in this case, to get the 54,831 miles, I actually had to put in 54,833 in Forescan, which technically would have been one mile too many, but you know. Anyway, it says that in the instructions. Just remember, start low, so start with the exact number that you think you should put in and see what it does, because you, you can only add to the number. You cannot subtract from it. You will have to have the entire gauge cluster uh, firmware reflashed and, and wiped, which would require moving, removing it from the car. So definitely don't want that to happen, but our cluster is looking awesome. I am super happy with it. On the Mustang 6G forums, Reeve 2 who sells this kit, shout out to Sam, he has 
in his instructions a bunch of different four scan parameters. So if your cluster comes, you know, when you order these, it, it's supposed to be plug and play with the exception of the mileage if, if you drove the car since, uh, uh, since ordering the kit. It's supposed to be plug and play because you give him your VIN number, you tell him what your red line should be set at. Uh, so for Mustang GT at 6,500 RPMs, they have an option for uh, 7,400. I'm not sure if that's the GT 350. I'm not sure which car has that red line, but you, you can you can switch between 6,500 and 7,400, which, which I, I think that's the Shelby red line, um, if I remember correctly. And you can also, uh, they have an option for whether or not you have a boost gauge. So whether or not you have a supercharger, basically. So mine's enabled, but I'm actually not using it on here because I have, uh, Roush actually gives me. So if you have a regular Mustang GT, you won't have a boost gauge here. You'll have, uh, this is oil pressure, and this might be like oil temp i think i forget what this is on uh, like from the factory but in my case because my car is actually a roush car roush car this is a boost gauge so i already have a like an actual boost gauge so i can enable it in one of my three gauges but i opted not to because i'd rather have more information in front of me not less and i figured if i had the boost gauge on the digital cluster it's pretty much redundant because i have a actually an analog boost gauge here but anyway if you have a regular mustang gt that does not have one of these center boost gauges like my car has uh, you'll be able to, to to see your boost gauge in um, in the cluster. So in my case, the only thing that was not set up correctly is the red line was set at 7,400 RPMs, not 6,500 RPM. So I did have to use four scan. And as you can see, I was able, sorry, there's a little bit of glare from the sun, but I was able to correct that. So now my red line is set properly at 6,500 RPMs. It's super easy, uh, but basically it'll tell you when you go in, into what's called the as-built format. There are just a bunch of numbers, so it'll tell you, okay, this is the parameter you want, which is which is a, a series of numbers. This is the parameter you want, and here's what value to change. And usually you're only changing one or two digits of the value. The value's like eight digits usually, it's in hex. You're usually only changing one or two of those. So it'll say like XXXX, meaning don't change these four, right? And then it'll say one XXX, meaning, okay, change the fifth out of the eight numbers to a one, right? If you if you have, if you want this red line. So in, in this case, I think the the value, the, I forget which digit it was, but it was set to one and it had to be set to zero. So setting it to zero would give you the 6,500 RPM red line and setting it to one would give you the 74. So I just wanted that to be correct, obviously, because my red line in this car is 6,500 RPM. Either way, my rev limiter, um, the, the engine calibration on the car, it, it will still hard rev limit at 6,500 so as to not over rev the car, but my dash wouldn't have accurately displayed the red line and little stuff like that bothers me. So anyway, that's all done now. The other thing that I did change because I no longer have a navigation system. So this car was a GT premium 2015 with a Sync 2 infotainment system. I actually bought the Sync 3 upgrade kit uh, from B Reeves 002 actually, believe it or not, from the forums right when I got this car. So it has Sync 3 and Apple CarPlay and all that good stuff now. But I bought the non-nav version because I, I really never used the factory navigation. I think it was another three or 400 bucks to have the factory navigation. And I was just like, this is a total waste of money. I'm only ever gonna use Apple CarPlay. I don't need the navigation, right? So I don't have a, a factory navigation system in this car anymore. Now, why am I bringing that up? There's a nav button here uh, that comes with the digital cluster because if you get the GT Premium that has the digital cluster, you will have factory nav, right? Well, in 4Scan, what's cool is you can change what this button does. So it either brings up navigation, which I don't have. So when I was doing that, it was just saying refer to, like the digital cluster would just tell me to refer to my sync screen. So that wasn't really doing me any good. It was effectively a useless button. But now if I hit it, you can see that center gauge. It just changes to a compass. So I can really quickly hit that and see what direction I'm going. Um, it's worth noting that, I mean, it gives you this fancy compass display, but the direction is also normally displayed up here. You can see it says I'm facing north right now. Either way, that button is not really all that useful for me, but I figured, well, if I can actually make it display the compass, it can actually, can at least do something, right? Versus uh, literally not doing anything at all. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, you can use the My Color stuff. So basically I figured out last night also with the My Color stuff, your primary color is going to be the color of all of the, uh, the highlighting, okay? So all of the gauges and stuff. And then if you have a performance pack car, it's gonna be what these 
what what these two gauges what color they change to at night so these are always going to be white during the day right you can see that right now they're just white but they will light up blue because i have that primary color set to blue your secondary color is just the rings so in the rpm right see how it has these the blue inner ring and outer ring and then the line that goes across the bottom here that's the only thing that your secondary color changes so you can have a different color combo which is pretty cool but anyway i it just took me a little while to figure out exactly which one was primary it wasn't immediately obvious to me because secondary was changing the rings but it wasn't changing these that this was primary and the primary here was actually uh, like like the fuel gauge, the temperature gauge, and like all of the middle gauges, the actual highlighting of the of those gauges. So I can just show you really quick if I hit my Mustang button and I go to my color and I change my primary color, let's say to red. Okay. Okay, so now you can see how it changed. See, so I still have my secondary set to blue, so the rings are still blue, but see how the highlighting now has, has all changed to red? Um, that's that's all that does. So uh, again, you just hit your Mustang button to get to that primary color. I keep it on blue. My car is blue. It has red accents because of the Roush. So I mean, you can play around the colors. I just keep everything set to blue, uh, including my ambient lighting. So yeah, that's it for the install. I just wanted to give you guys an update and kind of give you that information about some of the programming that you have to do in Forescan. Um, on the Mustang 6G forum, they have the digital cluster installation guide. I'll actually include a link to that thread in the description. So you can go right to that thread if you're interested in doing this mod. It tells you what parts to source. It tells you how to program stuff. It'll also direct you to Bereave 002's website in case you want to order a kit and have it pre-configured for you, or it, um, he will give you the uh, Ford model numbers of everything if you want to just source everything yourself. So that about wraps it up. Overall, pretty easy installation. As usual, I hope this video is helpful. I hope this video is entertaining. I'll see you guys next time. So reach for the stars, cause we